In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own stock portfolio dashboard like this that's connected to online pricing purely using Excel. I'll be using the stock history function and stocks data types to get refreshable stock data. Now, while there aren't any add-ins or other software required, these tools are currently only available to those with an Office 365 or Microsoft 365 license, as it's now known. If you have an earlier version of Excel, then you won't be able to create this dashboard, but feel free to continue watching because there are plenty of other techniques I'll share which are available in all versions of Excel. Now, before we dive in, I just want to let you know that you can download the completed dashboard file from the link in the video description. Okay, let's get started. First, I'll give you a quick tour of the dashboard so you're familiar with its components. At the top, we have some headline information, including our portfolio's total market value. We've got today's change in value and percentage, our total gain or loss, and I'm also interested in the US dollar versus the Australian dollar, so I've got the current exchange rate here. Below that, I have a list of my stocks, their industry, the units and price, the market value, and today's change. We've got the overall gain or loss, and the price trend for the last 12 months. In the bottom left, I've got a summary of my stocks by industry and their value, and below that a pie chart depicts the percentage of my holding by industry. On the bottom right, I've got a couple of shares I'm currently watching. A stock chart shows the volume, open, high, low, and close, and below that, the price trend for the last 12 months. And at the click of the refresh all button on the data tab, I can get up-to-date prices. Okay, let's move over to the demo file and we'll get started. In the first sheet, which will contain my dashboard, I've put in some headings and some formatting just to save time. I'm sure you know how to enter text and format at different colors, so I don't want to waste your time while I do that. So with that, I'll rename this sheet dashboard. And we'll go to the view tab and we'll turn off the grid lines so it looks nice and clean. On the next sheet, I have my ledger. This is a list of all the fictional stock transactions I've made. Each time I buy, sell or receive a share through a dividend reinvestment plan, I enter it here. Now notice that the table name is called Ledger and I'll be referring to this table and its column headers in my formulas. Now in order to connect my file to the free online data for these stocks, I'm going to convert them to the stock data type. So on the data tab of the ribbon, stocks. You can see they now have the data type icon to the left and it's added the exchange and the ticker to my stock names. My stocks are all on the Australian Securities Exchange or ASX for short. And this first stock is actually the ASX itself. You can see this one here for National Australia Bank has the ASX exchange and the ticker is NAB. Clicking on the stock icon reveals the card and the rich data now available in this Excel file for this particular stock. I can also extract this rich data to the grid by referencing it in a cell. So if I reference this cell here that contains the stock data type, you can see I get a list of fields that I can bring in. So I just use the dot operator and then here I want the ticker symbol. So I simply type it in tab to select and then press enter. All I need to do now is give this column a name. You can see it's copied down that same formula because this is formatted in an Excel table. Now on the dashboard, I want a summary of the stocks I currently hold. So I can use a formula to reference the stock column of the ledger table. I want this list sorted, so I'm going to start with the sort function. And I also just want a list of distinct items, so we'll use unique. Remember, the ledger contains all transactions, so there may be more than one transaction for a stock. Unique is just going to remove any duplicates. I need to filter the list to only include stocks that I currently hold. I'm not interested in stocks I've sold. So we'll use filter to filter the ledger tables stock column, where the sum of the units is not equal to zero. So I'm going to use sum if. where they're not equal to zero. Now this formula returns a spilled list of my current stocks sorted in alphabetical order. This is a dynamic array formula and dynamic arrays have some special attributes, which you'll see me use in a moment. 
One of them is that it spills the results to the cells below. Now before we move on, notice that I have some hidden rows, some spare rows, to allow for growth in my portfolio. In fact, I can hide this row as well. I don't need it right now. I want to extract the industry for each stock, and I can do that by referencing this cell here. Now if I select the whole list, you can see it automatically adds the hash symbol or pound sign. This pound sign is the spilled array operator. And what that means is if this spilled array grows or shrinks, then this reference will automatically pick up that data. I don't need to edit it. It acts a bit like a dynamic named range. So I'm referencing the spilled array in column B, starting in cell B6, and I want the industry. So simply tab to select it, press enter. And again, this is another spilled array. Next, I want the units. So I can use sum if to sum the ledger where the stocks match this list of stocks here. Again, referencing the spilled array. And I want to sum the range in the ledger table of the units column. So there's my list of units. The current price, well, again, I can simply reference this list of stocks and I can type in the pound sign or the hash sign or you can select the whole range whichever's quicker for you and I just want the price press enter market value well that's simply the units multiplied by the price now I want the spilled array multiplied by the spilled array and then it spills itself today's change well that's going to be the current price minus the stock's previous close, which we can get from the data type, multiplied by the number of units. Press enter, and that's the value of today's change. We can also see that as a percentage. So equals today's change divided by the market value minus today's change. In other words, yesterday's price. The gain or loss is also done with the sum if, so minus the sum if the ledger stocks match this list. We want to sum the ledger transaction amount plus the current market value. So the sum of what we originally paid plus the current market value. So that's our gain or loss. Obviously it's unrealized because we haven't sold the shares yet. Next, I can insert the spark lines which reflect the price over the last 12 months. And I can use the stock history function to get the price data. I'm going to place it to the right of the dashboard. You can put this on another sheet if you prefer, but I'll keep it here for the purpose of this lesson. So I'm going to use transpose to flip the results of stock history because stock history normally spills vertically down a column. I want it to spill across the columns. And I want the prices for this stock here initially, the first one. For today, minus 365. That is, so from a year ago through to today. And I want daily prices, so zero, with no headers, zero again. And I want the date, which is zero, and the close. Close my parentheses on stock history and transpose. Press enter, it'll take a moment and then it spills the results. So I need to repeat this formula for the rest of the stocks, but for the others, I don't need the date. Now, strictly speaking, I don't need the date for this spark line either, but I wanted to see it there just to give me comfort that this was correctly returning a year's worth of data. So this formula is almost identical. We're going to transpose the stock history function, referencing this stock, the dates are from today, minus 365, so a year ago through to today. And I want daily data, no headers, and this time I just want the close. I don't need the date as well. Close parentheses on transpose. Takes a moment. Now we can copy that down. We'll just copy it down to row 11. And I'm ready to insert my spark lines. So with the cell selected, insert line. This is the data, press enter, control home, and there's my spark lines. Let's apply some formatting 
We'll set them this green color and we'll just make the line a bit thicker. Now you might be wondering why I didn't reference the stock's dynamic array with the pound sign after B6. And that's because stock history cannot accept a dynamic array reference in the stocks argument and spill multiple dates. You can see there it's just returned a bit of nonsense. And that's why we don't do it that way. Unfortunately, this means that if I add any more stocks and effectively have data on these hidden rows, then I'm going to need to copy this formula down and likewise the spark line. But for the rest of the dashboard, it will all automatically update. So you just have to keep that in mind. Okay, I'm ready to do my headline figures. The first figure I want is the total market value of my holding. And that's simply a sum of the market value. Now you can see in the formula bar, it's automatically referencing the spilled array. So I'm never going to need to update this formula. It's always going to pick up all of the market values. Next, I want today's change. Again, we're just going to use a sum to sum today's change. Again, if you look in the formula bar, it's referencing the spilled array. Then I can calculate the percentage change. So equals today's change divided by the market value minus today's change. In other words, yesterday's market value. And that gives me my percentage. Now it'd be nice to have a visual indicator to show if the change is positive or negative. So let's use some conditional formatting in the form of an icon set. Now it's not correctly applying it. So let's go in and modify the rule because that should be a down arrow. And in here, I want where it's greater than zero, that's going to be a positive change. Where it's greater than or equal to zero, it's going to be neutral. It's obviously going to evaluate the positive first. So it's never going to do both a green arrow and a yellow dash. And then when it's less than zero, it's a red triangle. Click OK and OK, and there's our formatting. Let's apply that formatting down here as well. Again, I need to modify the rules so that it's applying it correctly. And now we have the indicators there also. The other thing we might do is use some conditional formatting data bars in here just to give a visual indication of the size of those numbers. Let's go in and modify the color, double click to open it and we'll make it this green color, which is in keeping with my theme. Okay, next headline figure I have is my unrealized gain or loss. And this is simply the sum of my gain loss down here. And lastly, remember I'm interested in keeping track of the US dollar versus the Australian dollar. So with that in there, I can go to the data tab and set this as a currency data type. And then I can simply reference the rich data and get the price. But I'd also like to include an indicator for the direction of this price. In other words, is that higher or lower than yesterday? So I'm going to insert some symbols, just these up and down triangles. I'm just double clicking to insert them. You can see them going into the cell here. Click close, select them, control C just to put them on my clipboard. I'll press enter to commit them to the cell just in case I make a mistake. And then in here, I need to format this with those up or down triangles. So I can use the text function to format it, but I need to know whether to use the up or down triangle. So I'm going to use if to test if this price minus yesterday's close, the previous close might not be yesterday, it could be last week, depends on the day of the week, is greater than zero, then I'm going to format it with dollar sign, the currency symbol, and four decimal places. And then I'm going to use the up arrow. So we'll remove the down arrow. Otherwise, we're going to format it with the dollar sign, four decimal places, and the down arrow. So we'll get rid of the up arrow, close parentheses, and I'm just copying, pasting, control V to paste in those triangles. Close if, close text, and we can see that today the US dollar has strengthened against the Australian dollar. So next, I want to summarize my portfolio by industry. And I can use the unique function and reference my list of industries available here. 
Again, it's using this build array reference with the hash or pound sign. So this formula will always be up to date. For the market value, I'll use sum if, sum if this list matches this list, then I want the market value. And notice they're all spilled array operators. I'm never going to have to update this sum if formula. It's always going to pick up the latest data. Again, let's use some conditional formatting, data bars to make this easier to read. At a glance, we'll change the color in keeping with the dashboard. I'll also insert a pie chart just as an alternative to see the parts to a whole. Let's get rid of the legend and I'm going to add some labels. So here I want the category name, not the value and the percentage. And I don't want those leader lines. I think they're ugly. Instead, I'm going to place the label outside the end. Let's bring it down here into place and I'll resize it. Let's just bring it away from the edge a little. Okay. So there's my pie chart. Let's bring this one over here so it's not sitting on top of the segment. We'll give it a new name, holding market value by industry. Now, personally, I don't think pie charts should contain more than three segments. So this goes against my rules, but I see pie charts a lot in portfolio analysis, usually with way too many segments. If you have a lot of segments, then stick with the bar chart. You can just as easily see the parts to a whole and the smaller segments don't get lost in a bar chart. Okay, the last part of my dashboard contains my watch list. These are the shares I'm currently considering buying. I have a list of them here on the watch list sheet. You can see there's just two. I'm also going to convert these to a stock data type. That way I can access the rich data. I'm going to add columns for the key information I want to monitor. Now there are a few ways we can extract data about the stock. One is with the formula, like you saw when I added the ticker. So I can equals the cell containing the stock data type, use the dot operator. Here I want the exchange abbreviation, tab to select it and press enter. All I need to do now is give the column a name. So you can see it's pretty easy with a formula, but we can also use this add column icon. So here I might want the ticker. I can type in T to take me to the start of the T's. It's the first item, double click and it adds it. And the nice thing about this method is it also adds the heading. Another way we can add columns is simply by typing in the heading or the name of the field. So I want the 52 week high. I just arrow down, tab to select it, and it adds it to my table. Next, I want the price, the price earnings, and lastly, the change, and we're done. Now these fields, remember, are all connected to live data, so I can refresh them at any time via the data tab and then refresh all. Now, if we just take a look at the completed dashboard, you can see I have a stock chart and area chart for each of my stocks on the watch list. To support these charts, I need some further analysis. So back in the demo file, I'm going to insert a pivot table from the table range. We'll just put it on this worksheet up here and I want the stocks in the filters and then I want the exchange and the ticker symbol. I need to reformat this pivot table layout. I don't want subtotals, grand totals. I want to see it in a tabular format and repeat the item labels and you can get rid of those field buttons. And from here, I want to use the options to automatically generate a separate sheet for each of my stocks. So I can use show report filter pages, I want it based on the stocks. And when I click OK, two sheets are going to be added to my file. So here's the sheet for ASB. Let's rename it. And this is the sheet for BLD. We'll rename that as well. Now, of course, you could type this data into new sheets manually, but I wanted to show you this pivot table technique because it's super handy, particularly if you have lots of stocks. Now, for each stock, I need the price data over time for the area chart. And I can use transpose again with stock history like I did for the spark lines. Here I need to concatenate the exchange and semicolon and then the ticker symbol. The start date will be today minus 365. I want a year's worth of data through to today. 
the interval is going to be daily and I don't want any header and I want the close. Close parentheses on stock history and on transpose. It will take a moment. So there's my daily data. I didn't put the heading in for the dates. You can if you want to. And for the stock chart, I'm also going to use stock history. Again, I need to concatenate the exchange to the ticker. And then the start date is today. This is just 30 days worth of data through to today. Here I want daily data. I want the header. And the order of my columns is date, zero for date, five for volume, two for open, three for high, four for low, and lastly, one for the close. Close parentheses on stock history. And there's my data for the stock chart. So let's insert that. You'll find the stock chart under the waterfalls. And I want this one here, volume, open, high, low, close. Let's just apply some formatting. We'll abbreviate the numbers here into millions. So I want a custom format. And from the list here, I can select it. Now, if you don't have millions in your list, you can simply type the format in here and click add. I also want the date to be abbreviated. So I'm going to add one here. This one never appears in the list, even when you add it manually. So I'm going to day, month, month, month. That's just going to give me a shorter date. We'll link the chart title to the stock name in the pivot table. Let's make it a bit smaller. And then I can simply control X to cut and control V to paste this into my dashboard. Let's make that a little smaller there. And then holding down Alt, I'm just going to snap this to the grid. I'll go one more. Okay, that's my first stock chart for my watch list. Let's go back and we'll insert the area chart. This one is under the line chart type. Now I don't need the horizontal axis, which is why I didn't put the dates in. There's too many data points for it to be any use. I'm going to explain what this data is in the chart title. Now this chart is going to sit below my stock chart. So I'm going to share the chart title from the stock chart. Here I just need to type in close last 12 months. I'd also like to change the format here. So instead of a solid fill, I'm going to go with the gradient fill. Now it remembers my settings from earlier, but you can change the gradient colors, select the stop, choose the color, and then repeat for each one. And you can add and remove stops using these buttons here. So there's my trend of the price for the last 12 months. So Control X and Control V to paste it in here. Let's use Alt to snap it in. I'm going to make this one a bit bigger as well. There we go. And then I'll just left click and drag to make that slightly smaller. All right, all I need to do now is rinse and repeat for the other stock on my watch list. So I'm going to go to the BLD page, copy this formula, paste it in there, and then grab this formula, paste it in there. It's just going to save me a bit of time. Now all I need to do is insert my chart, link the title to the pivot table, change the formatting. So this is millions instead of massive numbers. Change the date now. Even when I choose custom, it's not in there. I have to type it in again, which is super annoying. Okay, let's make that heading a bit smaller. We'll cut, control X, control V, holding down Alt, it'll snap to the grid. And then I'm just releasing Alt while I resize the top left. Let's do the next one. I'm just going to scroll back to the start of the page so that when I insert the area chart, it's not over on the right hand side. Delete that axis, gradient fill, give the chart a title, close last 12 months. Let's make this title a bit smaller. Control X, Control V, holding down Alt to resize it. Go of Alt so I can just squeeze that left border. All right, this one needs resizing too. 
And that's it. Remember the dashboard is connected to the online data sources. So I can get updates by going to the data tab and then refresh all. And if you keep an eye up here, it's changed slightly. It's slightly improved, not by a lot. And of course, if I buy or sell shares, the dashboard will automatically update for the most part. Let's take a look at that. Let's say I bought some shares on the 8th of January, 2021. My dates are day, month, year. And I bought shares in a company called ComputerShare. Its ticker is CPU. You can see it's automatically changed it to a stock data type because it's in a column of stock data types. It's correctly detected it. And all I need to do now is say it was a buy. I purchased 358 at $13.97. They were in Australian dollars, so I'm going to control D to copy that down. So my data has been added to my ledger. Now, if I go back to my dashboard, you can see computer share is in the list. And if we unhide these rows, you can see I now have seven stocks. So I can hide the rows I don't need, save them for later. All I need to do now is copy down the spark line and this formula. Remember, I couldn't make that dynamic. I need to edit my conditional formatting. So let's go in and manage rules. We'll just do this worksheet. And it's this one here. We want it now to go down to F12. And likewise for this one to F12. So there you go. The dashboard is up to date and you can see it's easy to add new data and it's even easier to get up to date prices with a click of the refresh all button. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the Excel file containing the completed dashboard and links to further tutorials on the tools used in this video from the link here. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.